Hi everyone, I'm Daniel, and I want to talk about some of my favorite cards that you're probably not playing, but should give another look to. So, in other words, some cards that I think are underrated. But what do I mean by underrated? Personally, I think that most cards in this game are good. The trick is to find the right home for the card, and to balance your deck appropriately to take advantage of it. But I'm not a min-maxer, so I do value some strategies and parts of the game more than some other players do. I'm just going to give you a rundown of some of my favorite cards that I think are worth finding their way into a few of your decks, even if they're not going to blow the cover off the game. I have 10 cards for you, 2 from each class, 1 level 0 card, and 1 leveled up card. So let's get started. With Guardian, we have Second Wind. This is an event. Play only as your first action. Heal 1 damage. 2 damage instead if you drew a Treachery this round. Then draw 1 card. This is one of the few great healing cards at level 0. There are restrictions, yes, but most of the cards you draw from the encounter deck are treacheries, so you will find the time to play this card if you need the healing. Well, maybe you don't need the healing, but you probably do if you end up taking a lot of direct damage, like if you're playing Mark Harrigan, Daniela Reyes, maybe Nathaniel Cho. Next up in Seeker, I have True Understanding. This is a skill card, Commit only to a skill test from ability printed on a scenario card. If this skill test is successful, discover one clue at your location. This is basically another copy of deduction to me. It's a clue that requires a successful test, and there are some restrictions, but you're gonna find scenario skill tests all over the place. They can be treacheries, parlays, a test on a location, whatever. If you have a high willpower stat, it's pretty easy to pass a test and get a clue but I'd also consider it in Ursula in campaigns with a lot of agility treacheries, or you can commit it to someone else. The other good thing I want to point out is that the wild icon helps you pass the test, which you probably wanted to do on a treachery anyways. I find that the intellect icon on deduction is often totally wasted on seekers because they usually stack intellect up to the moon no matter what, so you're mostly just committing deduction for the action compression. Speaking of action compression, on the rogue side, Eavesdrop is a super cool way to pick up two clues at once. There are some weird things here. It requires an unengaged enemy, and it's not investigation at all, even though you are testing intellect. But if anyone on your team is playing an evade heavy build, you're going to find unengaged enemies all over the place. You can also benefit from the fact that it's not investigation. You get to avoid locked doors or high shroud locations, and usually the evade value of enemies is about two or three sometimes one. I like this in one or two players where you can clear off a tough location without investigating and then just move on. Wow, are all these cards from the Forgotten Age? Okay, for level zero mystic, I picked Miss of Relia, or however you pronounce it. Everyone always thinks about the investigation and fight spells, but we're going to give the evade ones their time in the spotlight here. I think the action compression here is excellent. If you succeed, you move to a connecting location. Even if you're evading a hunter, they won't try to catch up with you until next round, so you pretty much have two rounds without having to deal with enemies, and more if you can keep moving. The upgrades are pretty good too, but given that evade values of enemies are generally pretty low, you can make do with no skill boost on this asset. This is kind of the same card as Mists. This is a skill card. If this skill test is successful during an evasion attempt, the evading investigator may immediately disengage from each other enemy, engage with him or her, and may move to a connecting location. I love the action compression again. The upgrade is a lot better actually, since it automatically evades all of the other enemies you're engaged with before the move, but this one is pretty good for level 0, and survivors really get a lot of mileage out of their innate skills. Okay, moving on to the upgraded cards, we'll go back to Guardian and look at Galvanize. You're spending two resources for an extra action that can be only used to fight. I know Schizo Tools ability and Swift Reflexes gets a bad rap, but don't underestimate the power of getting one more action when you're dealing with enemies. It can mean the difference between killing an enemy with a lot of health and taking a lot of damage or horror yourself. Anyways, this card does one better and also readies a Guardian asset that you control. I could make a whole video about which assets are worth readying, but the top of the list has got to be Beat Cop level 2, which will let you deal one more testless damage this round. Fun card. Logical Reasoning 4 is next for Seekers. 
For each clue you have to a maximum of three, either heal two horror from investigator at your location or discard a terror card at your location. The level zero is plenty common, but I know that people think that the level four version costs way too much XP. Maybe it does, but if you can hold on to it, it will solve a whole lot of problems at once, especially in three or four player. The horror heal is pretty good, but getting rid of two or three frozen and fears at once is crazy good. I know you might think that will never happen, but you're wrong, it absolutely does happen. Arkham is a game about consistency, but it's also a game about swinging things in your favor with big moves. I've chosen Think On Your Feet 2 for the rogue upgrades. I like the level zero one a lot, and this one's pretty good. It was a bit hard to pick out an underrated XP card in rogue because they're all really good. So this one says, fast play when an enemy enters your location. Immediately move to a connecting location, the enemy still enters your previous location. So this isn't for every investigator, but it's still a fun way to say no to the game. Let's say a big hunter enemy is about to move into your location. Now you can either move further away and avoid their attack, or you can move into the location they were just in. That's going to save you a lot of time and actions trying to kill or evade them. I'd save this as a trump card in your hand for when a situation gets dicey, which in fact usually does happen in Arkham Horror. Wow, well, you'll notice a lot of ways to avoid dealing with enemies in this list. In my experience, it's just very time consuming to try to eliminate every enemy on the board, and it's kind of more fun to sneak around. Now, it's probably better to vaporize every enemy if you can, but sometimes you can't do that in a single turn or round. Ineffable Truth is a fight spell that's actually masquerading as an evade spell. I'm picking the level five one here because it's especially good at softening up a big enemy. So this is an evade, you have to spend a charge, and the attempt uses willpower instead of agility, you get plus three willpower. If you succeed, deal two damage to the evaded enemy, and then there's some classic mystic backfire stuff. And it's sort of like a stunning blow or cheap shot on a stick, but it's better. Since it is an evade, it won't provoke a retaliate. And once the enemy is evaded, retaliate doesn't matter anymore either. So feel free to keep firing away with shriveling or something else. Last on my list is Nothing Left to Lose. Pretty simple. Draw up to five cards, gain resources until you have five. This economy card is so good that it has to remove itself from the game after you play it. The dream, of course, is to draw five cards and gain five resources. And while it doesn't happen every time, you should play as if it will, making sure that you get at least three of each. Strangely, it's a great card to mulligan for because you generally spend your first turn playing a few assets. Now that you've paid for them and those cards are now no longer in your hand, you can play Nothing Left to Lose to refill your hand and go back to five starting resources and five starting cards. It's also great in the mid game when you use up a lot of events or skills and need to reload. Okay, that is it for now. Hope that you give some of these cards a try if you haven't already and let me know some of the cards that you like to play with that you think are underrated by the community down in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video.